Hey guys, today we're going to talk about four goal games and their importance in developing youth players. So let's go! I have a video called Run Better Sessions where I go through the typical portions of a normal session for me. But I had a request to break down those individual portions of the practice. And the last video I did was on rondos. Today we're talking about four goal games. So for me guys, at a basic level, a four goal game consists of two teams going directionally towards two of four goals that are spaced out wide. Here we have an example of a 3v3 four goal game. This is the starting four goal game, especially for youth players. And I would stick with this for quite a while before advancing because it will take some time for the younger players to get the concepts of this activity. So guys, just like the rondos, you got to do this consistently. The way to get your players to really get these concepts is to do it over and over again. So guys, there's three general concepts that we're trying to get out of these four goal games. So the first is attacking as a unit or as a group. The second is defending as a unit or a group. And the third is how do I switch the point of attack? So let's begin talking about attacking as a unit and how four goal games really help this. And we're gonna use the example of the 3v3 four goal game. So you can see here the player with the ball in the middle starts and the first concept that we're gonna talk about is support. So as this ball is played over here, the central attacker has a couple of options, but one is to consider supporting the player with the ball here. So as defenders come, can we support this person? Right? Can we give them an option to play back? The second concept would be, if this ball is played here, can we create a 2v1? So can I make a run here? Or as this is going, let's say the guy dribbles here, could I make an overlapping run here to create a 2v1 to this goal? All the while, they should be getting their head up scanning, looking for space, looking for pressure. Alternatively, could we dribble into a 2v1 situation? If that were to happen, then the support would be coming from the wide attacking option to come out here. And now again, you've created 2v1 going to this goal. So guys, this should be coached in the flow of the game. So as you're watching the game, you can say stuff like, can we support? Can we support? Can we create an overload? Can we create a 2v1? Is there a 2v1 here? You can say stuff like, take them on, take them on. Great support, great support. But you shouldn't be stopping the game and freezing it and freezing it. Um, you certainly can at times if you see sort of the same mistake made over and over. A lot of times when you start these, you'll see players, they'll play a ball out wide and then that central player will just keep going and totally leave them. Again, it's going to take time for these guys to get it. But this idea of support and creating overloads as we're attacking as a team, it's very important as they develop. Okay, so what about defending as a unit? How do we take these four goal games and apply it to the defending side? The person closest to the ball, as we know, should be providing the pressure. So here in this example, you can see the person in the middle, the pressure is here. As this ball comes out here, the person now who's pressuring is gonna be the wide defender. And the central defender can't come over here, right? Because that leaves their man there and they can't stay here. And the reason they can't stay here is because now you have a run that could be made behind. So what you have to have is this idea of this is where a pressure is. Now the person off the ball has to cover and they have to cover their man, but more importantly, they have to cover the dangerous space. Because if this ball gets played back here, he's really not that dangerous. If we get caught and a ball gets played into here, now we're in big trouble. So pressure cover balance, okay, which means that if the pressure's here, this person's covering, maybe here in this area, watching for this space and this guy, and this person comes over, cinches in, and uh, provides what we call the balance. So these are basic concepts that youth players can get. The idea of defending both a man and the space is really, really key here because when they get started, if they're gonna defend a person, it's just gonna be one person, and a lot of times they'll just follow the ball. So wherever the ball goes, you'll see, you'll see this, right? This is when they get started. Versus understanding the idea of having to cover their man and cover space, and then just balancing out the line here. There's no reason for this defender over here to come over here, right? And again, it's gonna take time, but they'll get it eventually where they start defending as a unit. So here, guys, again, the things that I try to say in the flow, in the moment are, Who's pressure? Who's pressure? 
Who's cover? Who's cover? Is he dangerous? Where's the dangerous space? Trying to give them some leading questions, get them thinking, how am I defending in this four goal game? The last coaching point and overall concept to discuss here with four goal games is the idea of switching the point of attack. Now this can be challenging for youth players. They, they wanna go forward, forward, forward. By doing four goal games, you introduce the idea that if one goal is closed or defended well, perhaps we can switch it and try to score on the other side. So, so as the ball gets played out wide, let's just create a scenario where the wide player tries to take his man on, and let's say that he is maybe mildly successful at doing that, but before a shot can be had or something, let's say that the defenders come and, and it looks looks kind of well defended like this. If the central attacker is supporting, if the ball carrier gets his head up and sees that there's a lot of pressure on this side of the field, we can switch it through the support. And now if it's done fast enough, oftentimes what you get into is a 2v1 on the other side. The concept of being able to switch the point of attack um, it is really critical here. By having a four goal game, it gets them to get, get their head up and scan. They can say, all right, well, if this goal is close, then we'll take it to the other side. The coaching points here would be, get your head up, get your head up. Can we switch? Can we switch? Is it closed? Is it closed? Again, trying to coach in the flow of the game. So there are many variations to build on as your team gets older and more experienced. Also, if you have a more skilled team, you can certainly do this as well. And it can stem from 4v4 four goal game, a 5v5 four goal game, 6v6 four goal game. The other thing you can do is start adding neutrals. So you could do a 4v4 plus two four goal game with the neutrals out wide. Hey guys, I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section or just uh, reach out to me for more information.